and a bro fist to you all. And I hope you've all had an absolutely amazing, tremendous week, my friends. Everything here is going perfectly. I have never known a week to be so full of absolute excellence in my entire life. And let me just tell you, audio listeners who don't get to catch the streams, and our YouTube friends, is that there is nothing that has gone wrong at all this week. We have pissed victory and we have shit excellence. That's what we've done. We are absolutely 100% gold stars across the board. Everything is superb. Life is wonderful. Couldn't be better. So that's why we're going to celebrate our Friday afternoon. But it is not the final stream of today. We will be back later for the Path of Exile launch. It is coming tonight. It's going to be good. I'm going to play myself some Saboteur. I'm going to drop some bombs. I'm going to blow things up. And it's going to be all kinds of fun stuff. It's going to be all kinds of fun stuff. Thank you for joining me on this Friday. And for our wonderful new viewers we've made across our adventures of Guild Wars 2. Where we have nearly completed the first raid. We have one wing to go to fight the ultimate final boss. And we now have a suspicion. Well, more than a suspicion as to who that is going to be. And it should be kind of an epic encounter based on what we faced in the third wing where things started to find their feet. Guild Wars managed to start locating where things are going to be. I'm just going to do one thing and it's absolutely not because of technical difficulties. I'm just going to open my window to let a cool breeze in. All right. I'm just going to do that real quick. Uh, so I'm going to do that uh, under the... Pr I'm going to open the skylight too, actually. So it's a little cooler in here. Yeah, let's do that for no reason whatsoever. That's a really good idea that I've just implemented. <clears throat> Don't worry about it. It's all normal stuff that's going on. Nothing to worry about at all. I don't want you guys to think that maybe something's going wrong. <sighs> because it's not. Everything's fine. Everything's good. <clears throat> Everything's all good. It's fine. <clears throat> nice cool breeze blowing through here now. <sighs> It's good. For our new viewers, welcome to Drama Time. Glad to have you here. Uh, Drama Time is simply in our MMO adventures especially, but generally in the world of online gaming, we run into so many crazy people doing so many crazy things because they have the power of anonymity. They can shield themselves behind the keyboard and have little peekers. And that tends to make people do things they would never ordinarily do in their entire lives. They would never do these things. But on the internet, they absolutely do. They do do those things. And we like to share and regale each other with these tales. And you can send them into drama at preachgaming.com where they will be sifted through. And our wonderful Bex will go through them and pick the favorites for us to go through. So don't worry uh, if your story doesn't get read immediately because uh, Bex builds up a little collection for us and get things going. So it's still all very, very good. Today, she has presented me with three tales that you guys have sent in. And... Um, there seems to, I kind of want to start with this one because we we haven't had a story about a guild making colossally bad rules and decisions for quite some time. Um, and I think I want to start with that. Uh, this, <laughs> so this story is titled, This Was a Stupid Effing Idea. <laughs> I really, I do kind of like it when guilds, uh, come up with this new ingenious system even though like the best in the world do not utilize this system in any way shape or form they think they've cracked it they think they have found the missing source uh that would really um fix up all these problems it could be a guild wars 2 guild we do accept stories from literally any game would love to have some guild wars 2 stuff would love to have uh more of all sorts of mmos we, we like the adventure because the one thing that unifies all the people across mmos is their gamers and that makes them crazy for the most part um so let's get into this one shall we me audi hate that to start with me audi to you uh in the past couple of months you've read some tales about a guilty ex-military raid leader and a toxic elitist canadian <laughs> yes we have i am both of those things so I'm taking it as a sign. Oh, God. Can Canada has a military? Really? Is that like a bunk bunch of moose? How does that work? I don't think I've ever heard of the Canadian military. Well played. Bun a bunch of mooses riding around or something. I don't know. 
LMG moose. <laughs> they apologize for the issue. Hockey sticks. <laughs> they come at you with a bunch of hockey sticks and names that are unpronounceable. I have both of those things. So I'm taking it as a sign that it is time for me to get off my ass and write this tale to you. Well, salutations. I am hoping to visit Canada in 2025. It is on my 2025 list is to get to Canada. It is one of the countries that yet remains untrodden by the feet of preach. And I want to be there. I am a raid leader, sir. And you do not need the gavel, although I have it. I got it out last weekend. Welcome home, baby. For I know, and your chat doesn't need to tell me, that I am guilty. I am a guilty party. Okay, so we have uh, a venting going on here. <clears throat> this isn't about juicy cheating couples, entitled loot gremlins, or social rejects demonstrating precisely why society rejects them. Instead... I wish to inform your viewers and your audience with a cautionary tale. I want them to recognize, especially if they're new to MMOs and new to raiding, the warning signs of a clearly dysfunctional raid team and raid leader. Okay, you're playing yourself as kind of a victim at the start of this story. There's no room for that here. We will decide if you're going to be a victim or not. Okay? That is for us. We are the judge. We are the jury. We are the executioner. And it is on us to decide the guilty parties and who is the victim in these tales. My MMO pedigree, like many others, started with World of Warcraft. Of course. <laughs> Sucking in millions of players from around the world. <laughs> During late vanilla or early Burning Crusade. I don't know which because I was, yes, a filthy casual. So casual I had no idea if the expansion was available or not. I had never even heard the word expansion when I started playing MMOs. <sighs> you guys make me feel so old. It took me over 12 months to reach level 60. And that's not even with remaking too many characters. And of course, I made a shitty Night Elf Hunter. To be fair, I did start on a Dwarf Hunter, but I re-rolled at level 6. Because my brother wanted to play a druid. But that was my only alt. It took you 12 months with a single character and a hunter. The easiest thing to level in the world. <laughs> and you intentionally made a dwarf hunter, by the way? Yikes. Intentional dwarf hunter. Gross. I played religiously, albeit slower, until the latter half of the Cataclysm expansion before actually giving the old unsub a try. After that, I play for a couple of months at a time before growing bored and just unsubbing again. Oh, it is on the opening artwork. It is. Yeah, the opening piece of art is a dwarf hunter. True, 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 true. To be clear, at no point during World of Warcraft, in the entire time I played throughout all those years, did I stop being shit at the game. <laughs> My total raiding experience from the Burning Crusade was that I did Karazhan once for a guild that was just asking for someone on a farm run. I don't recall much from that time, but I suspect keeping aspects of the Viper active at all times so I didn't run out of mama, mana while spamming Serpent Sting would have placed me low on the damage meters. It probably would. It probably would. I raided slightly more after leveling a Resto Shaman in Wrath of the Lich King, but it was never anything more than the occasional pug. I was the sort of player who got nervous pressing the Q button for LFR. Oh. Oh, bless your heart. There are a lot of players like that. You shouldn't feel bad about it. There are way too many players who are terrified of being in a group with other players and making mistakes, especially in WoW. In fact, my proudest gaming moment for a long time still sticks out in my memory and torments me to this day it was a particularly bad trial of valor lfr run where guam killed everyone apart from myself a tank and four dps with its breath i solo healed 80 percent of the boss hp it made me feel like a god you didn't just wipe it with 80% left on the boss. Like, of course, Guam can't kill the tank, but it's about... 
it's about everybody else, right? You don't make people watch someone kill a boss for 20 minutes. <laughs> That's not fun. Shortly after this moment where I felt I had peaked in World of Warcraft. Bless your heart. Bless you. I've peaked. I've killed Guam LFR. <laughs> this is it. It doesn't get any better than this. This is the cloud. I uninstalled the game and decided to try FF14. Well, due to an unfortunate and crippling injury, my military career was coming to an end. Effers, dude. And I had an enormous amount of free time to fill. I'm not sure how it is elsewhere, but in my unit, there was something called Holding Platoon. HP is where careers and ambitions go to die. Injured? You're going to HP. Want to change jobs? Welcome to HP. Releasing? Believe it or not, HP. HP was the administra administrative equivalent of sweeping unwanted people under the rug until the bureaucracy can finally figure out what to do with them. See, is this true? Is this a thing? You just get stuck in like a group of people that they don't want anymore? But they can't fight. Can't they just discharge you? Why do they keep you on? Because I assume they're still paying for you and stuff, right? Why did it? Why? What's the What's the purpose behind that? I don't know. I don't. I don't know much about the military. I've never been involved in the military, or anything like that. He goes into it a little bit. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> the rejects. Yeah, you think they'd just be discharged, right? If you're unsuitable, or they haven't got anything to do for you anymore. Uh, paperwork and red tape. Is, is it quite hard to get kicked out of the military? Because the movies always make it seem like it's pretty easy, right? You, you get, uh, you go in front of that big court people, they rip off your buttons and your badges, and then you're out. Oh, you ring that bell. I see that a lot. You ring that bell. <laughs> you ring that bell and you go home. The daily routine of HP was to report in the morning and get our assignments. Some people would be tasked to help other units for the day or do busy work. Oh, you became like a laborer. Oh, I see. Okay, that makes more sense. So they just have you fill in when somebody needs a temp, essentially. The fortunate ones got a permanent assignment. A buddy of mine spent a week pummeling sandbags with a sledgehammer because water had gotten into them and frozen. That's disgusting. That's gross. But it could be worse. They could be farming them more. So you got to look at it that way, right? You know what I mean? Like, there's always something worse out there. There is. There's always something worse out there. For someone as injured as I was, though, there was no meaningful work. Every morning, I would wake up. I would have to put on my uniform in full, full splendor, report in the morning, get sent back to the barracks to sleep for the whole day. That sounds so miserable. I did this for 18 months of my life. <sighs> Jesus. That's going to cause brain rot, man. Even though I had access to World of Warcraft, playing casually on a single character every single day just was not cutting it. FF14 was a breath of fresh air. I started as a white mage because <laughs> the almighty Google said it was the most similar job to Resto Shaman. And within a month, I had finished Stormblood's MSQ and started gearing up. It was during this time I heard about something called FF Logs. A website that grades your performance relative to each other. It sounded awesome as somebody who was looking to improve. Okay. I was certain that I was a great healer. And that I'd see fantastic numbers for the normal and alliance raids that I'd been farming. I was comfortable in there. And when I pulled up my character. The highest grade I'd gotten was a 17. Out of 100. I had fought, fell all the way up until these points that I had been a crucial member of the team. That I had been somebody... Who the people would rely on. But this was not going to cut it. This couldn't stand. So I decided to become a sweat. I opened guides. Learned how server jank introduces opportunities for slide casting. And the animation lock can cause zero GCDs to delay GCDs. I practiced my highly complex DPS rotation on a, on a target dummy. Back then, 
White Mage had two dots. Two. I'm sure glad that Squeenix decided that that was too much effort and took one of them away at the start of Shadowbringers. Having more time to spam my single target spell was riveting gameplay. <laughs> I dipped my toes into extremes and combed through logs, finding where I could improve. I decided that learning other jobs would help me become better as well. Explore my horizons. I've put a camera in front of you guys. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> I leveled a paladin. And it helped me recognize that little buffs that my tanks would give themselves taught me how their mitigation gave me more time to deal DPS. It took months. I gradually turned my sheet of normal mode gray passes into glorious oranges in extremes. During this time, the military had finally decided that my injury, which they knew was permanent, was not going to heal. So they kicked me out. With a full pension, though, bonus points. Nice. It turns out that the retirement sucks when you're not able to drive and have limited mobility. At least while I was in the military, I had to report daily and could listen to the others in HP complain about their assignments. Life at home got boring fast, so I decided to fill my time with the only thing that made sense. Savage raiding. <laughs> well, there's only one thing for it, guys. We're going savage. That's the only way it's going to be. I'm going savage. A year ago, doing something like savage seemed like the pinnacle of skill reserved for the best of the best. Everything I had read said that I'd have an easier time in a static than trying to use the dirty party finder. As an infantry officer in the military, I had two main responsibilities. The first was to manage mountains of paperwork for my subordinates. The second was to tell them when, where, and how to apply lethal force, should it be called for. I was good at my job, and it seemed to have a lot of overlap with raid leading. I mean... <laughs> so I thought <laughs> it would be best to start my own team with me in command, despite never ever having pulled a savage boss in my entire life. I also assumed that it would be very hard to kick me for poor performance if I was in charge. Now, that is the root of most raid leaders in MMOs. That is the actual core reason there are of raid leaders in a lot of MMOs, and also why the very good players do not want to be raid leader. It works both ways. It works both ways. To this day, I have absolutely no clue why anyone wanted to join my team. I'm sure your chat is gleefully spamming guilty already. Actually, no, they kind of think it's big brain. Uh, in the interest of preventing chat becoming a homogenous block of gavels for the remainder of this story, I propose a game. Can you guys count the total red flags throughout my tale? There have already been a couple. Uh, I would say... The lack of experience is a red flag. There's nothing wrong with using your leadership skills. I only count that as the one. No, I only see one, really. No. No, two. Two. Okay, we'll go with two. One is the starting a savage team without ever doing savage before. The second one is you definitely considered the fact that you might be garbage and you can't be kicked because you're garbage because you'll be in charge. So I would say there's two that I've seen so far. Everything else is kind of fine, kind of normal, but I'm going with two. It was patch 4.55, ladies and gentlemen, by the time I got started. The current tier's weekly lockout had been removed and Echo applied to it. Shadowbringers was scheduled to launch in six weeks. So I decided to recruit players for the brand new expansion. I made the creme de la creme of recruitment ads. But where to post it? I considered several places, but the best ones I could think of, which would definitely grab the attention of as many players as possible to join my team, were Reddit, the official forum, and I started posting it on random discords that had people in it who played FF14. Ah, oh, awesome. Awesome. Ah, oh, no, that's great. That's great. Look, how else are you going to get the name out there? This is fine. <laughs> so, I mean, we've got... Let's say recruitment is a third red flag. <laughs> Yeah, that would be red flag number three in my eyes as uh, we went there. <clears throat> a sensible approach 
would be to have uh, to be headed to Savage to try all these players out. You know. <clears throat> and to be honest, posting these places worked. I got dozens of applicants. Now, Savage was the content I was hoping the team would be able to tackle. But in my infinite wisdom, I thought the best way of seeing if these players were good was to use the most recent extreme fight synced to min item level to see how they did. Okay. Each applicant would be brought along for two kills and assessed based on their better kill. Okay. As an easier fight that everyone it would be familiar with, it would reduce the time spent wiping when this was just for a trial. Kill logs with similar times would make it easier to compare against other players' performance. Everybody I asked to trial went along with this clear dumbassery. After the first night, I selected a couple of the players who had done mechanics cleanly and pumped and gave them a formal invitation to our clearly elite team. This involved offering them the slot, sending them the document I had prepared called the Statics Rules and Expectations, And I decided because FF14 clearly leaned into RP more than WoW that we should have a small initiation right in game. Uh huh. <laughs> at which point are you out? I'm not particular out at the do. Let's do the. I'm not super out at doing the extreme and seeing how you do. I'm kind of okay with that. I'm out when you send me the rules and expectations, but I'm not sure if that's true. Because Loz sent me that when he started, when the, the boys started bald, fat, and ugly. He sent me a document about it. And I didn't read it. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Loz did send me this. I probably have it somewhere. But Loz did send me that. There was no way I was reading it. There's no chance. It was like our code and our, our ex expectations, essentially, isn't there? Of course, I'm not reading a document like that. I'm not reading a document like that. No way. I don't think anybody else got it. Is Crusher here? Did you get the document? I want to know. Did anybody else get the document? He wasn't. I don't, oh, no, because Crusher wasn't there at launch. Noops. Oh, Clog, are you here? Did you get the document? I got the document. I'll, I'll have a look through my DMs with Loz, but honestly, it's a scary place. I'll see if it's in there. Okay, so we're also doing a small initiative. That's probably what I've kicked me, let, let me go, is like an RP introduction to the guild. That would have been too far for me. Every night, with our new members that I had accepted, we would democratically vote on who else had made the grade. So you immediately invited these people and then gave them power over the guild. Huh. On more than one occasion, we would invite someone to the team and tell them to hop back in voice so they can participate in the discussion for another role we are filling that night. Yeah, I would leave if that happened. If you invited me to a static and then said, can you join comms while we vote on other members? I'd be like, uh, this is really not my job. <laughs> Using this process, it took several weeks to find all eight people we needed. Jesus Christ. However, we still had time before Shadowbringers. So we decided that a good test now we had our full team would be to head into the current post-Echo Savage tier and practice together. This was a mistake. <laughs> it took less than 10 minutes for everybody to realize... That I had no clue how to lead a savage team. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> They're all way better than you. Every single member of the static is so much better than you are. And they've all just realized it. You know you basically built a team for somebody else. Which could be a role. 
there is probably a place for that in MMOs where you come in like some sort of recruitment officer and you like build a team of good players and then you just disappear and you let them go and you're like, there you go. There you go. Yeah, like some sort of like rope ringer that you bring in, like a job recruiter. You fix up a team and then you leave. Giving callouts in extreme had been really easy since I'd done the fights tons of times and there was plenty of time to adjust if someone died. It turned out Savage wasn't like that. Savage was harder. <laughs> the mechanics were new, often overlapped, and were faster than I was used to. And I hadn't read how the fights worked. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. The sensible thing to do would be to recognize that literally every other member of our team had more experience than me and then nominate someone to take over. But I decided to once again draw on my military experience for a new and improved solution. In the military, an officer such as myself had a second in command. A number one, so to speak. The two I see. Oh, so the second in command. Oh my god, you're using military abbreviations on me. <sighs> the second in command assigned for a new second lieutenant whose military career consists of studying at university and summer training camps, would be a senior enlisted member with two decades of experience. This is to ostensibly ensure that the second lieutenant has access to a well of information and can learn how best to perform their role. But <laughs> the truth is that to ensure that a fresh-faced 21-year-old whose sole qualification is a piece of paper saying he's in charge isn't able to get their entire platoon killed when they inevitably screw it all up. My solution then, a better solution in my mind, was to split raid leading into two distinct roles. I claimed the role of administrative leader. This is fine, by the way. I've been in guilds that work this way. This is actually fine. This is totally fine. I would handle all the recruitment, attendance sheets, logs, loot trackers, and other non-while raiding tasks. Another member of the team became the raid leader, handling strats, callouts, and actual raid leading. This is absolutely fine. This is totally normal. I decided to sit down and create a new rules document. I have linked it for you, son of a bitch. Oh my god, no. Oh my god, we have a document. <laughs> no, I don't think it'd work for FF14 because the groups are too small, but certainly in 25, man. Uh, I have the document. I will show it on screen now. Here it is, my friends. We have the document uh, here. <laughs> we have it. Okay. The schedule of Savage Raiding will be Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday. 7 till 10. Gross. Static leadership. Administrative and raid leadership will be handled by a democratically determined administrative leader and raid leader. Wait, what do you mean? They can vote you out? You built this team. You put them all together. And then you decide to let them have the power to vote you out. Is what I'm reading here. Okay. Administrative leader will be responsible for scheduling recruitment, tracking attendance, loot, distribution, and passing and uploading logs. Raid leader will be responsible for handling callouts during fights, announcing deviations from established strategies, commonly referred to as adapt, <laughs> unconventional limit break uses, early wipes, etc. The AL and raid leader will be primary points of contact for questions and concern. It's eight people. And will arbitrate disputes promptly and fairly. Okay. This is to manage six people, by the way. We need two leaders to manage six people. Attendance. Players are expected to attend all scheduled raid nights on time. Players who are going to be absent, emergencies that could not be scheduled around excluded, are required to give 24 hours prior notice to give me time to find a replacement. At raid start time, the party will be listed publicly in party finder to fill the spots of any absent players. 
Players who are going to be late who provide notice before raid start time will be given a 15 minute extension before a replacement is sought through Party Finder. So if you are not there on the second, you are replaced. You are out. Food and potions. Players are required to bring appropriate consumables starting at 5.0 and food to all raid nights. The raid leader will determine when potions are to be used. Gear and loot distribution. Players are required to repair their gear before raid start. All gear is to be kept fully melded. All players are required to cap their weekly tombstones before Sunday raid night. All players are required to send the administrative leader a list of their BIS gear prior to raid time on the first raid night of the tier. Loot will be withheld until a player's BIS list is submitted. Guides of preparation. All players are expected to watch or read guides for savage and ultimate content. Lame. All players must be in the Discord voice channel while raiding. Personal disputes. All members are expected to treat each other respectfully and with maturity. If anyone feels bullied, harassed, or uncomfortable resolving conflict on their own, the player may contact static leadership to mediate the dispute between two players. This is six people. There is to be no fucking between members. Just don't. That came out of nowhere. Where did that come from? Who hurt you? It, it just says, look, I'm not lying. It just says no fucking. Just don't. <laughs> that seems out of the blue. <laughs> maybe fucking with each other. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's a typo or whatever. Or maybe... Uh... How would you even enforce that? You can't. Maybe he's been in a husband-wife guild before. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Maybe it's a husband-wife guild before. Ooh, maybe there's some dark theories there. He puts that in all his contracts. Okay. Logs, advice, and improvement. Past data for the fights will be uploaded live to FF Logs. A link will be provided prior to raid start. All players are responsible for pulling their own weight and ensuring that they are not a liability to the group. Underperforming individuals who hold back group progression will be required to improve their performance in a timely manner and may be asked to withdraw from the group if unable to reach specific standards in a reasonable time. Does that include you? Yeah, I thought that as well. Does that include you? Because I don't know. But you said you were orange passing, which should be fine, I guess. But that was in like extremes. So we'll see. Be respectful when giving advice or feedback to others. Direct concerns about another player's performance to static leadership instead of confronting the players. All right, don't go to them directly. Okay. All right, those are the rules. We're all clear. We've got our rules. <clears throat> okay. I have to say, things started going very well after that. Most of the team already knew these fights because they killed them already. So most of what the raid leader's job was telling me what I needed to do. <laughs> <laughs> even though i wasn't in charge during raid nights anymore i still had fun i loved managing the spreadsheets documents food pots logistics in early Shadowbringers, we had a couple of players disappear unexpectedly one our healer decided to join another team that was more hardcore than ours the deciding factor he told us is that we weren't planning to do log runs what does that mean we weren't planning to do log runs. Passing runs? Why wouldn't you do that on farm, right? Yeah, farming for good passes. That's not, I mean, I like doing stuff like that. The other, our off tank, was involuntarily fucked off after threatening to drive to the next state over and murder our main tank. Russia? We found replacements the same way as before using the new Shadowbringers extremes to trial people because the Savage tier hadn't released yet. After the tier launched, prog went okay. There was a lot of player turnover during that first tier. Our healer had a complete mental breakdown in week two. Our caster slot became a revolving door of one night trials who inevitably failed every mechanic and struggled to compete with our tanks on damage. And by week six, we entertained... Uh, we entertained trying out a triple melee comp just so we could have enough people to prog the last fight. 
the ranged samurai we found <laughs> impressed us enough that we kept him after our monk drop the following week. It sounds like you've recruited 25, 30 people for six slots so far. <laughs> it ranged is in quotation marks. So they had some guy like go and bait things as ranged, obviously, to deal with the ranged mechanics. They put this poor samurai to go and run out and deal with the ranged mechanics and bait things. <laughs> poor guy. Yeah, zero uptime samurai. But he did it very impressively. <clears throat> He did it very impressively. He did a good job. So he got he got he got uh, invited. On the rare nights that we actually did manage to kill bosses, we used a custom loot system of my own design. Jesus fucking Christ. Why? Why? We've been doing this. Look, you know, MMOs have been around longer than I have, and I've been around a while, and we figured it out. We've sorted it. It's done. There's like two systems, and they're fine. It's fine. There's no reinventing the wheel in this. We've tried every single system imaginable and we've sorted it. It's done. You either have points or you have a council. And that's it. It's done. <sighs> if there was one reason, audience, I wished I had found drama time sooner so I knew what I was doing was a mistake. That's why we're here. Because although you didn't, somebody here has now discovered it early. Given my love of all things spreadsheety and needlessly complicated, I came up with the following loot system. Okay, guys. Here we go. Thank you, Teus. Uh, <clears throat> the loot system. All players submit their BIS list at the start of the tier. We know that from our rules document. We're aware. The number of items required per boss is recorded for each player. Okay. The number of current items looted from each boss is recorded. Right. The player with the lowest percentage of items they need from a given boss has priority on loot from that boss. In the event that two people both have the lowest percentage of items they need from that boss, the item is given to whoever gets the highest random roll. Okay. Right. In practice, it will work something like this. I decided to give everybody an example so they know what to expect. Suppose boss A drops item X. Item X is BIS for players 1, 2, and 3. Player 1 has half of the items they need from boss A. Player 2... Oh, okay. It's not half. Player one has... <laughs> I thought you couldn't do math for a second then. Player one has one out of two items they need from boss A. Player two has two out of four of the items they need from boss A. Okay, so <laughs> I read that as half and two quarters. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Player three has one out of three of the items they need from boss A. Item X is given to player 3 because they have 33% of the items they require from the boss. Whereas players 1 and 2 both have 50% of their boss items. Okay. <clears throat> okay. It all makes sense to everybody. This is fine, right? <laughs> if the following week, boss A drops item Y that players 1, 2, and 3 all need that it would be determined by slash random roll between players 1 and 2, both at 50% still, because player 3 now has 2 out of 3, 67% of the items they need. For comparison, most players I have spoken to either funnel loot to a single DPS for week 1 clears, give loot to all DPS before tanks and healers to help with week 2 to 4 clears, or just let anyone roll on anything BIS because they're not going to clear until gear has eliminated anything reasonable in, uh, resembling a DPS check. Anyway, in my mind, this system was great. <laughs> because, <laughs> and he supposed struck a line through this. As a healer, it meant I wouldn't have to wait five weeks before getting any loot. And he then he's like struck a line through that. <laughs> it would ensure that loot was divided equally 
In practice, it meant everyone had to sit around in the instance for a few minutes after we got the kill while I checked the spreadsheet percentages and decided who got what. Hey, nothing better on farm runs than killing half the raid time with loot distribution. It's so fun. Oh my god, it's the best! Especially if there's lots of bosses to kill. Oh, good. Five, ten minutes per boss kill figuring out all the items. Absolutely so stellar fun stellar stellar fun yeah i will definitely be there for that <laughs> and not just fucking dip immediately <laughs> apart from that <clears throat> we struggled when our raid leader decided he was going to optimize our boss killing strats optimizes in quotations i don't have a problem with raid leaders developing their own strategies i love blind progression and finding ways to solve mechanics what we got though was not that this continued into the next tier and culminated in what your FF14 audience might cringe at, but we decided to call it Modified Ilya Light Rampant. Mike, I know you haven't seen this mechanic yet. I struggled to describe it as anything other than an explosion of sparkles followed by an immediate wipe. <laughs> oh, fuck that. <laughs> okay, the FF14 Raiders are pissed. <laughs> How could you? <laughs> okay. Thanks to the aforementioned shiny vomit, it was not impossible to figure out exactly what was going on when our fails as often as not strat didn't work. Ultimately, we had to kick our raid leader because he would not let it go. Also, by then, I knew what was going on. So I could take over raid leading again. Wow. 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 Kick the raid leader. The guy who like led you to kill the bosses. You kick him once you've learned his strats. Okay. Alright, that's pretty dark, dude. Since then, things have mostly mellowed out. Loot is DPS prioritized the first couple of weeks. Then free lot for Bist the next to the tier. One of our tanks gave himself call-outs to help him. <laughs> we need to shield wall in a minute. Shield wall in. I need to use mitigation now. Mitigation. It turned out that because this was the only way he could find himself comfortably tanking by calling everything out for himself, we just let him be the shot caller. It made sense. It does make sense. That really works out. <clears throat> our entire team is now a pure democracy of strategy decisions often a player will suggest something everyone will discuss it in discord between raid nights and we all know what we're doing come raid night after using quality images put together online i still manage the vastly simplified spreadsheets handle recruitment and make the occasional executive decision if players are split on an idea while the whole raid leading has uh, been handed over to the entire team good <laughs> there's eight of you it's fucking so easy. Just give it to Lion and Raven to argue about. They'll sort it out. It's fine. Oh. <clears throat> and still I have the power, though, to give the old, it's not you, it's me. No, actually, it's you. Get out of my team to certain people. It doesn't happen often. And when it does, it's always my co-healer. But I suppose that's still my job as the, as the man in charge. Somehow, this team is coming up on its fourth anniversary and with only a couple of exceptions, everyone has been here for at least three years. We've got a nice ending. We've rebranded a couple of times since the start and are currently themed after Florida's most famous superhero. I don't know who that is. Florida has a superhero? Florida man? We're taking a break now because Drama in 6 1 halted our DSR progress. I consider it Florida man, right? That's who I know of. <clears throat> the drama was the, the setup for ruining this. And I just want everybody to know that even if you start the guild with ludicrous and insane ideas that are all fucking awful and all these red flags, if you just go with the way everyone else is going, it works out fine. <laughs> A nice wholesome ending, but Jesus Christ, do we not have to have these loot documents? They're so painful. These new strategies, these new ideas that come together. <sighs> How many red flags did you get? I didn't get... I mean, everything at the start. It was just this, like, bold ambition that these guild leaders have. 
it's the craziest it's it's painful the bold ideas are the i'm gonna reinvent the wheel i'm gonna do it oh we need delilah hello delilah and zathrox who will be the stars of this tale and operation cluster launcher operation cluster launcher okay <clears throat> sounds like a scam artist everyone's got a new idea especially if it helps them not be screwed over <laughs> typically way let's go preacher and the wonderful audience i hail to you today from team usa hello I'm a long-time audio listener of Drama Time, and I'm excited to finally put give you my first story. I come to you today with a tale of mischief and pranks from the days of retail Wrath of the Lich King. Ah. There is no need for gavels here, Preacher. Because, like so many other people, I come to you an already guilty man. Aw. Still guilty. Well, let me give you some context. A lot of people are turning themselves in these days, aren't there? A lot of people turning themselves in. I started playing WoW back in BC, around the time the Black Temple came out, after my cousin introduced me to the game. I begged and begged my parents to let me play and was told that I could play on one condition. I help my dad level and play because he wasn't good at video games, but also liked the look of WoW. That's a hard pass. That's a hard pass. I said yes immediately. I love my dad. Oh, you're going to ditch him though, right? His dads just don't have that kind of free time. I give it to like level 10 <laughs> before you're just off. <laughs> you're just off and by. Yeah, he loves his dad. It's all good. He's going off and playing. We level capped around the time that Sunwell came out. Oh, they stuck together. Oh, blessed be. Blessed be. They stayed together. We level capped around the time the Sunwell came out. And raided in a cesspool guild's B team. Which surpassed their A team very quickly. And pretty quickly drama unfolded. Oh, we need a guild name from our live audience. If you are a wonderful, wonderful live audience. Could provide a guild name for us. And pretty quickly drama unfolded as this was happening. And we split off into a brand new team. Where we were no longer team B. And we were going to be a focused raiding guild. The webcams. Oh, fucking assholes, all of you. <clears throat> For our audio listeners, we've been through five cameras to do drama time tonight. No, four. Four cameras in order to do drama time today. But it is what it is. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> our brand new guild, which was branded the webcams, was born in drama, lived in drama, and died in drama. But besides that, that team was fire. <laughs> we were among the first guilds on the server to clear Nax, Malagos, and Three Drakes. When Ulduar came out, we were the second guild to kill Yogi Boy, server second heroic trial of Crusader, and the server first heroic Ice Crown. Congratulations, that's a hell of a feat, actually. Well done. It is within the webcams that we find our main characters. Zathrox was a PvPer. Ergo, a troublemaker, and never taking no for an answer. I'll fucking kill you, mate. He lived to make other people suffer. And he was one of the people who would definitely upset people and call it a prank. Jokes, mate. It's just jokes, that's all. Can't you take a joke? Stupid you, mate. He was the kind of guy to go and gank and camp people leveling in the open world to see how mad they could get them. Delilah, meanwhile, was what could only be considered a movie league stoner. With enough health problems to kill any other person five times over, yet somehow... The liar just kept on living. <laughs> he was actually better at playing the game when he was as high as possible. I hope that man is still alive because... God, he was fun to play with. <laughs> uh, I played with a few people like that. If you played with them sober... <clears throat> it, they just weren't good. It was only when they were like... Alright. Yeah. When they'd reached that level where they... Like, you know that the whole room was just a smoke keg... But that's when they got good. And then there was me, my friends. The wonderful author of this tale. 15 years old. I just like killing the bosses. And despite how annoying some guys in our team could be, they were good at killing bosses. 
The truth was that I, along with the other core raiders, were getting bored. Insanely bored. When this story takes place, we were in the constant drought between ICC and the launch of Cataclysm. How long was that one? I don't think it was a full year, was it? ICC release date. Was it a full year? We'll go from the release date, but we don't know when they killed it. December 8th, 2009. Um, uh, it was the 7th of December, 2010, when Cataclysm game came out. It was 364 days. <laughs> it was less than a year. <laughs> it was less than a year. By a day. <laughs> By a day. Uh, yeah, that was a long old time. That was a long old time. <clears throat> it counts. Yeah, we'll call it a year. It was a leap year. There's an extra day in there. Yeah, technically less than a year, I suppose. I'm not checking if it was a leap year. It was towards the end of a break-in raid on farm night after downing the Blood Queen that a whisper came my way in the pink from Zathrox. Right, me. Have you got time after raid, though? I've got, like, an idea I want to run by you. It confused me. I liked Zathrox, but we didn't talk much and certainly not the kind of people to be whispering each other. Just a difference of personality. And all we had in common was that we liked killing bosses. I was curious, so I whispered back, Sure, what's up? No response, no reply. The raid resumed, we cleared Lich King, and everybody went to bed. Zathrox and I jumped to a different channel in Vent, and were soon joined by Delia. Alright, mate. So Delia and I have come up with this plan, right? And we need your help. We want to do like a prank on the server, you know what I mean? Now, I knew what Zathrox thinks of as a prank, so I was cautious. I didn't want to actually upset anybody or ruin their day. I'm not interested in just camping newbies that are level 20 in Ashenvale for two hours. But I'm, cu I'm also kind of curious. So I asked the obvious question. What are you doing that needs me? You're an engineer, right? You got like all the recipes, mate. Yeah. Nice, mate. Do you have the cluster launcher recipe, though? I couldn't remember. I opened my profession tab and checked. Indeed, I did have the recipe for cluster launchers. Yeah, why? Zathrox then explains his plan through bits of poorly restrained laughter. Delia interjects occasionally, but it's clear he's just getting roped in as a helper as well. And I'll be honest, Mike, Zathrox may be evil, but he's also kind of a genius. I know getting involved will be a bad idea. I know it won't end well, but it does sound funny. So I agree to be a part of this little trio. In this plot, I have two roles to play. First, because I'm the only person he knows with the ability to make cluster launchers. Second, because at the time, I was rich as all hell. I was Scrooge McDuck, baby. I was one of the few engineers on the server that had made a ton of gold selling Samanite, Saranite Razorhead arrows and their bullet equivalents. As for the plan, it was simple. So simple it hurt. Back during this time, cluster launchers have a different model than they do now. And that model had collision turned on. It acted as a sort of wall that you couldn't move through. I don't remember this at all. It was also just tall enough that you couldn't jump over it without a bit of starting elevation for that jump. When you placed one on the ground, it would go directly under your feet and you would be inside of the launcher. If you didn't move and you jumped, you could get on top of the launcher where you could then put another launcher. The launchers stuck around for ages. They would stay around for something like 10 to 15 minutes. Right, we have a note from Bex here. I found a little video of some of the other shenanigans people got up to the launchers. All right, let's take a look at these things. So you're essentially, you can build... I don't remember Blizzard ever putting something in that actually had real collision that players could introduce. Uh, this is uh, for our live audience. Oh. <laughs> this is very old. Let's have a look. 
Okay, so for our audio listeners, it's pretty clear that they have put cluster launchers in the bank so nobody can enter the bank. And they have blocked everybody on the server from being able to get inside the bank. I do not remember this happening at all. This is genius. You can blink through it. All right, so the video shows a mage is able to blink through somehow, I think, finding the correct path. But players cannot get... And now the entire server is stuck outside the bank. Oh, the video also showed that if you get elevation, you can f- slow fall over, but they've literally blocked the whole server from getting into the bank, and they're all crowded up. Oh, my God. <laughs> More. <laughs> M-O-A-R. Oh, this is a classic video. Uh, I believe in this video we're in Dalaran. They have built a wall around the teleport room in Dalaran so that nobody can use the portals. <sighs> I believe that's the room with all the teleports in for the Alliance. So now nobody can portal out of Dalaran. That's really, really... Oh, 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 they've made a macro to do it. And it shoots fireworks as well. Yeah. Nice prank. I mean, there are ways around this. There are ways of getting around it, but still. <sighs> they got it done. They built the wall, Cake Owner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can fly over it oh they've made one that's they've made a pretty high tire oh, it's high tower and they're just shooting fireworks at it. it oh my god the guy's just going and going and going i can't believe i have never heard of this i cannot believe i've never heard of this all right so the essential part that we need to know of the story is that you you can literally build walls <clears throat> I'm, yeah, this sounds like something that was live for maybe a day or something. Conclusion, lulz. Yes, it's a classic video. <laughs> That's an old school MMO video for you. It, that music probably had DMX in there somewhere, or at least some Linkin Park. There's a few videos of it in YouTube. I'll have to put that in my memory banks. So I don't remember it. So we all got to work quickly. Recruiting a few of the troublemaking guildies to the cause. I fed money to a few of them, and they bought the mats on the AH or farmed them up in the world. And I spent hours sitting at a blacksmithing hammer crafting cluster launchers. When my inventory would get full, I would trade them to alts of our conspirators who would place them in a bank guild that we formed for this purpose. When we ran out of space in the bank guild, we made a second bank guild and filled those tab with cluster launchers as well. Hundreds, hundreds of cluster launchers were created. Three days later, it was time to execute the plan. It was Tuesday night, the server was filled with people getting ready to raid, running their daily dungeons, and having a generally good old time. All the conspirators were online, eight of us in total, and positioned in key strategic positions in Dalaran, Stormwind, and Orgrimmar. We moved a lot of the launches to the Horde through the Booty Bay Auction House. I was stationed outside of the Mage Tower in Stormwind. In vent, Zathrox gave the signal... And we could hear Delia giggling as everyone got to work and placed the launchers. The Stormwind Mage Tower, every auction house, every bank, every inn. The passage into the harbor, the choke points in Orgrimmar between the valleys, class trainers, profession trainers, even the entrance to the stockade instance, Ragefire Chasm, Violet Hold. We blocked every single place. We walled off every major location in the capital cities in the span of minutes. Not only that, but for extra icing on the cake, we walled off the raid entrance to Ice Crown Citadel. That's really cruel. It was cruel before. That's really, really cruel. That's super cruel. At first, General and Trade Chat were quiet. But then the posts started coming through. What's going on? Why can't I get out? I'm stuck in the auction house. Can someone help? I can't leave the inn. Is there a warlock that can summon me? Word began to spread across the server that someone had done something to the capital cities. And soon people began flying back to the cities to see what was going on. We very specifically didn't wall off the portals in Dalaran to Stormwind or Ogrimmar because people would go through them and then be trapped on the other side. Lol. (laughs) 
Some people panicked. Some people were raging. A few people issued a good old-fashioned LOL in chat. The conspiracies invent. We were pissing ourselves. Before long, people started to spot who was putting the launches down and we started to get whispers. Most were understandably and justifiably angry or hateful, but a couple got us laughing even harder. They said they wanted help. Zathrox was hesitant because he didn't want to give launches to people and then... Oh, some people wanted to help build more walls. Oh, I see. Zathrox was hesitant because he didn't want to give launches to people and then have them just be wasted. But Delia went ahead and started trading a few hundred away. Immediately, people began building their own walls. Walls were appearing in places we hadn't even considered but were actually genius. New waves of rage began flooding general and trade chat as the conspirators flooded opportunistic pranksters with cluster launchers to cause new havoc. When old ones started to despawn, we placed down new ones. We built them more. Only the mages were spared the wrath of the cluster launcher as they could blink through the wall. We did see that in the video. It was around an hour into this glorious, horrific event that a yellow message appeared in everyone's chat. The server was being restarted. <laughs> That's the problem with doing stuff in the US servers. If you do it over in the EU, it lasts all night, baby. It lasts all night. Unless one of those US devs is awake, if you do it in the EU, you've got forever. You're all good. The server was being reset. Someone at Blizzard had noticed. This wasn't a scheduled or normal restart. Delia began belly laughing in vent, high as a kite, and the laughter was infectious. When the server shut down, all of us were nearly falling out of our chairs laughing that we'd actually got the server shut down. When the servers came back up, the model had been changed and collision had been disabled. The game was up, our banker guilds holding cluster launches had been disbanded and the few hundred we had remaining were lost to the twisting nether. We also had in-game mail from a GM. I don't remember his exact words, but it was something on the lines of, you are not getting banned for this today, but this is your warning to your account. If there's something like this happens to your account again, you will be banned. This probably shouldn't have been scary, but to be honest, Preach, it actually made it funnier that with, to us that we had technically gotten away with it. We laughed for quite a while until laughter faded to silence as we realized that our fun was over. After things had died down in vent and people began to log off or find other things to do, I couldn't help but start to feel guilty. The chaos had ended as quickly as it had begun and we had returned to the boredom of farming a raid that held no upgrades for us. And waiting for the drama that finally killed the guild. But despite that twinge of guilt, I would do it again in a goddamn heartbeat. That guild did indeed die a few months later. My dad and I moved on to far better guild for Kata and Pandaria. We took a break during Ward and came back during Legion with a vengeance. We're still raiding together to this day. Father and son still raiding together off triple expansions. Albeit in a more chill and less drama fueled guild. And I've acquired ahead of the curve for Vault of the Incarnates a few weeks ago. Dad and son have been raiding together since Wrath of the Lich King and still playing. That's incredible. Every now and then, this story will get brought up by a friend of mine or my dad who still raids in WoW. Sadly, nobody recorded this experience, but I did manage to find proof of our little adventure in the comments of the WoWhead Cluster Launcher page. I was going to say, you should have taken pictures. I hope that you and your chat enjoyed my little tale of pranks and buffoonery. Enjoy the rest of your glorious fight and whatever stories you may read. And we have an, a WoWhead article on this. Let's have a little look. All right, it says here, somebody managed to wall off the entrance to Dalaran North Bank today, trapped several dozen people inside, and kept about 50 more from getting in. Haha, I saw a thread on MMO Champ about this very thing. Probably the same server. There's a link here. Somebody's done the same thing to the Alliance area in Dalaran, EU Agrimar. I expect there will be some sort of fix incoming so they cannot stack on top of each other anymore. Although the blind panic that ensued was funny, it's still easy to get in and out, even if you can't use the doors. The abuse and insults heaped upon the GM that tried to get people unstuck wasn't. <laughs> So, yeah, that was uh, uh, could people not hearthstone? Yeah, there are definitely ways around it. That's what I was saying. There are ways around it, but sometimes your hearthstone's on cooldown, sometimes you're screwed up. I'm gonna take a little break for just a couple of hours, ladies and gentlemen, as that comes to the end of drama time for this week. But we are back in a couple of hours for some Path of Exile. It launches tonight. I'm gonna get my build sorted and get all sorted. I'm gonna spend some time with the family, which is due back in approximately 15 minutes. And hopefully I find out some news about my doggy. So we'll have some doggy news and Path of Exile in a couple of hours. After uh, after I have a little break, have some dinner and things like that. All right. So be awesome. Be good. And I'll see you shortly. If not, I'll see you Monday. So be awesome, guys. I'll see you in a bit. Bye-bye.